Hi, third grade. My name is Victoria, and I work for a place called the Steelworks Museum. Have you ever heard of this place before? The Steelworks Museum? Well, here at the museum, we teach people about steel, how it's made, the people who made the steel, and a very special place that makes the steel here in Pueblo. This place was called CF&I. That stands for Colorado Fuel and Iron Company. And this was a very special place in Pueblo's history because it made steel products that went all over the American West and eventually all over the country and all over the world to help people with moving uh, products like in railroad tracks. It made nails and bridges and fence posts, things that people needed to build the West. So today, I would like to teach you um, a little bit about a famous scientist. He never lived in Pueblo, but his, his ideas and his experiments were definitely used by people who worked here in Pueblo at our steel mill. So let me um, share my screen really quickly so that you can uh, see what I'm talking about. Okay. So the man that I'm going to talk about today is a very famous scientist, and his name was Isaac Newton. And like I said, he never lived in Pueblo. He actually lived in England, and he lived a super long time ago. He was born in 1642, and he died in 1727. Like I said, he was a scientist, and he was a, a something called a mathematician. And this is a person who loves using math in their work. And some of his discoveries and some of the things that he thought about and discovered, we still use today. So one of the things that he, um, he discovered was that light is actually made up of many different colors. So what he did was he took a glass prism, which is kind of like a kind of like a triangle, and he put it up against the um, up to the sunlight, and it broke that white light into a rainbow of colors. And he was one of the first scientists to discover that white light is actually made up of seven different colors. Another discovery of Newton's was that he built the first working reflecting telescope. Now people for many, many years before Newton had been using telescopes to look at the stars and the planets, but they didn't get a very accurate or clear picture when they were looking at these items through the telescope. Newton created this type of telescope that has mirrors on the inside. And these mirrors bounce light uh, back and forth to give the scientist or the person looking through the telescope a more clear picture of what they were looking at. Like I said, Newton loved math and he actually developed and invented a new type of math at that time and it was called calculus. And what calculus does is it helps to measure irregular shapes and curves um, for different uh, objects. Of course, he didn't become a scientist overnight. He had to study. And when he was in college, many historians believe that right around 1661, or right around that time, he was a student um, at college, and he was either sitting um, outside reading a book, or some people think that he might have been inside looking out the window. They don't really know, because not a lot of people were around in 1661 that are still alive today. But the story is that he saw an apple fall off of a branch of a tree. And he spent the rest of his life studying that apple. 
He wanted to know why the apple fell off of the branch. He wanted to know how fast the apple fell to the ground. He studied why the apple, when it fell off that branch, why it didn't bounce on the ground and fly back up into the air. And he also thought, hmm, maybe this force that keeps the apple on the ground, maybe it's the same force that keeps the earth in motion and moves the earth around the sun. So this force, he ended up calling gravity. And he did many, many experiments uh, for the rest of his life using gravity and also the ways in which things move and how they move. These um, ways of, and the reasons why things move, he actually called laws. So as you know, a law is kind of like a rule. And he came up with three main laws. One of them is called the law of inertia. And what this says is that an object in motion at rest will remain at rest unless another force acts on it. So for example, if you look at our pictures here, we have a palm tree. And that palm tree, according to what Newton says, is gonna stay just like that forever, unless another force acts on it. So for example, if that palm tree was in a very windy area, the wind is gonna act on the palm tree and it's gonna blow the leaves around and make it move. Um, so if you um, wanna look at this other example, I'm just gonna move this camera down just a little bit. I have this spinning top that I actually uh, created for another project here at the museum. You can see we have a, a stick here and then this is the top um, part of the toy. So this first law says that this top is gonna stay on this table forever. It's at rest. It will stay there forever unless another force acts on it. So for example, I could be walking by this table and I can see this and I could say, ooh, what's that? And pick it up and move it. Maybe this top is inside of a very windy room and the wind comes up and it blows it and it knocks it off the table. Maybe um, uh, Pueblo is located in a very um, earthquake prone area. It's not but just, you know, we're just pretending. Maybe some force shakes this table and it makes this top fall off of the table. So there are lots of different types of forces that can act on objects and cause them to no longer be at rest. So that's what that first law says, is an object in motion at, an object in motion at rest will stay at rest unless another force acts on it. Likewise, an object in motion will stay in motion unless another force acts on it. So if we take our um, example again of the spinning top, okay? So we have our top here. And if I spin this like this, you can see that that top is gonna spin forever unless another force acts on it. So the force in this case was gravity. Eventually this top went from this position to that position because gravity pulled it down onto the table. Newton's second law says that acceleration happens when force acts upon the mass of an object. So as you can see here, there's a picture of this boy riding a bicycle. And I'm sure you've probably ridden a bicycle in your, in your life. 
So what happens when your feet are on the pedals and you move those pedals around and around and around? The bicycle moves, right? It moves forward or it can move backwards sometimes. Well, this law says acceleration happens when force acts on the mass of an object. So the mass at this, in this example is the bicycle and the force is your feet on the pedals. So if you pedal really, really, really super, super hard and super fast, your bicycle is gonna go fast. But if you pedal kind of slow and easy, your bicycle is gonna go slow and easy. Newton's third law that he kind of figured out is that for every action, there is a reaction, an opposite reaction, actually. So if you look at the picture in this slide, you can see there's this person who's standing on the edge of a boat. I don't recommend this, it's kind of dangerous. But if you use your imagination, what do you think is gonna happen when this person steps off the edge of the boat? That's the action. The person steps off the boat. The person's gonna fall into the water, right? It's gonna get wet. That's the reaction. Another reaction is that the boat is also gonna move in the opposite direction, just a little bit. And this is because there is no more weight on the end of that boat from the person. Another way to look at it is if we take our example of our spinning top again, move the camera down. Newton's law says for every action, there is an opposite reaction. So the action in this case would be my fingers twisting on this stick. The reaction will be that this spinning top moves around. So action is the spinning and the reaction is it's gonna keep going. So why is it important that we know how and why things move? Well, remember, I work for the Steelworks Museum and we teach people about the steel industry. If you look at this picture, these workers are working with a piece of railroad track. Railroad tracks, of course, go underneath the wheels of a train. And railroad tracks are actually very, very heavy. And they're kind of hard to move. They're so heavy, people can't lift them up with their hands. They have to have special equipment to move the railroad tracks. So remember what Newton's laws say, for every action, there's a reaction. And one of his laws also says that the more force is put on the mass of an object, the faster it's gonna go. So if these people who are working with this rail, if that conveyor belt, those, those kind of long tubular looking things that are underneath the rail, if that um, breaks, and that piece of rail comes crashing down to the ground, that's the action. The reaction may be it might fall on somebody's foot and smush their toes. It might get out of control on that conveyor belt and it might go super, super fast down the, the conveyor belt and it might squish somebody's fingers. That would not be safe at all. Here's another example um, of a picture from our collection. And <clears throat> like I said, railroad tracks are very heavy. They're also very, very hot when they're being made. That's why in this picture, it's kind of an orangish red color. So this thing here in the middle, this is a, a big saw and it's cutting the railroad track, which is right here, it's cutting it into smaller pieces. And when the saw touches the red hot railroad track, it creates a bunch of sparks. So the action 
would be the saw cutting the railroad tracks. The reaction would be the sparks are flying all over the room. If you look at this person here, he's standing here and we don't want him to get hurt because that would be kind of a bad day at work. So the action would be the cutting of the rail. The reaction would be all the sparks are flying up in the air. And so it's important for him to know this um, law of motion so that he can get out of the way. He won't get hurt by the sparks. So let's do another experiment using our new knowledge from, um, from our scientist friend, Newton. And we're gonna make what's called a popsicle stick catapult. So for this, you're gonna need a couple, of, um, a couple of pieces of equipment. First thing you're gonna need are some popsicle sticks. Now you can use the skinny popsicle sticks. That's fine, it'll work. I just happen to have the, the fat type of popsicle stick. And you're gonna need five of these. You're also gonna need some rubber bands. You're gonna need three rubber bands. You're gonna need some markers. And this is just to color and decorate your, um, your experiment. You're gonna need some glue. You can use um, this type of white glue. It'll work just fine. When I make this experiment, um, I'm gonna use hot glue just to make it go a little bit faster. But if you don't have hot glue and all you have at home is this type of glue, it'll work just fine. It'll just take a little bit of time for the glue to dry. And you're also going to need a bottle cap. Now this type of bottle cap actually came off of a um, two liter bottle of soda, but you can, um, you can find these on water bottles, pop bottles, um, bottles of um, like sparkling water. Um, so that, that's what this is. Okay. So let me get out of this and um, I'm gonna show you how to make this super cool experiment. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get your popsicle sticks and you're going to get three, three of your popsicle sticks and you're going to put one on top of the other, just like this. Then you're going to get a rubber band. You're going to put it over the end of your popsicle sticks like this and you're going to twist your rubber band, and then you're gonna pull it over the top. So twist and pull, twist and pull, twist and pull until it's not hanging down anymore. You're gonna get another rubber band and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So, Twist and pull, twist and pull, twist and pull, twist and pull, until you don't see any more rubber band hanging down. Okay. Now on this end here, this top part, if you want, you can color that and decorate it with your markers. With your two popsicle sticks that are left over, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put them one on top of the other. We're gonna get a rubber band and we're just gonna do the same thing on one end. So we're gonna twist and pull, twist and pull, twist and pull, twist and pull. Twist and pull. Okay, just like that. Now on this end, you can see, you can open this end. That's good, that's what we want. Okay. And again, on this part, 
If you want, you can use markers to color and decorate it. <clears throat> so we have our two bundles of sticks and we're gonna open up this end here and we're gonna slide this end, slide it right inside, okay? So it looks kind of like this. Okay. With your bottle cap, okay, again, you're gonna take your glue now, and I'm gonna bend the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. And again, I'm using hot glue, but you can use regular school glue for this. If that's all you have, that's okay. It's just gonna take a little while for it to dry. And I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of glue on this end. And put my bottle cap right on there like that. Now when you do this, you want to make sure that there's a little bit of wood right here. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit so that there's room for your finger. Okay? And you can see this looks kind of like it looks kind of like a basket, doesn't it? Okay? Now, this is your catapult. So I'm gonna use little tiny marshmallows for this experiment. You can use marshmallows, you can use M&Ms, you can use any type of really small candy. If you don't have small candy or if mom and dad say no, you can't use that, you can use little pieces of cereal. Or if you don't have that or mom and dad say no, you can also use little tiny pieces of paper to do this experiment. So, remember what Newton's law said? The first law says an object at rest is gonna stay at rest unless another, um, another uh, action happens to it. So this catapult is gonna stay just like that until I decide to do an experiment with it. Newton's second law says, I'm gonna put two, well, I'm gonna start with one. Newton's second law says the more force you put on an object, the more acceleration it's gonna have. So I'm gonna use my fingertip, I'm gonna push it down, and I'm gonna use my fingertip on this, this end, push it down. Oh, did you see that? How that marshmallow moved? See here, let me move this camera back so maybe you could see it a little bit better. Okay, so let's put it in there. Push this down. There we go. Okay. Let's try it with two. If I use a lot of force, if I really push it down really hard, whoop. Okay. <clears throat> what happens if I put all for it. What do you think? No, oh, maybe we'll just try it with three. Okay, you ready? More force. Do you think it's gonna go pretty far? Yeah. What if we try it like this? If we move this so that it's up on its side instead of flat. What do you think about this? Let's try. Newton's law says more force. If I push down really hard, do you think it's gonna go pretty far? Oop, it does. It goes far, far away on the, on the other end of the table. So you can do that experiment on your own. Newton's third law says that for every action, there is a reaction. So the action is me pushing on the end here. The reaction is that the marshmallows 
are going to go flying. Okay. So we have action, reaction, action, reaction. Well, I hope that that explains a little bit about Newton's laws. And you can do this experiment at home and maybe test out different types of materials in your experiment. This is called changing the variable. So does an M&M work better than a marshmallow? Does a piece of cereal work better than a, than a piece of paper? So you can do that experiment at home, and you can also measure the distance of how far your experiment will fly. So I hope that you enjoyed, and hope to see you at the museum again very soon. Bye-bye.